Good morning. It's a joy to have you here as we celebrate and worship and get a chance to have fun. You know, it's, it's not, it's, I don't know that it's in a, in a United Methodist DNA to really have fun. You know, we, we, our, our founder, he has the experience of the Holy Spirit coming and touching him. And in his, in his journal, he writes, I found my heart strangely warm. Oh, yippee, yippee, yippee. But it is a day to celebrate and rejoice and give thanks to God for the birth of the community of faith, for the growing of the church. Um, some announcements that we do need to make. Oh, I forgot to say something. I've, you know, after six years, you'd think I'd get it right. Anyway, whoever you are and wherever you may be, you are loved by God and you're welcomed here. That is who we are. Thanks be to God. A couple of announcements we do need to make. The first is that immediately after the service, there'll be a short, emphasized short, brief, really quick church council meeting. Um, as part of our responsibilities in changing of pastoral appointment, we have to approve the salary for the incoming pastor. Uh, that's you know, just kind of get up, the, pa the salary will be the same, we vote on it, then we go have some goodies. So. Please be ready if you're on church, if you're interested. If you're on church council, be in the fellowship or in the uh, in the chapel immediately after the service. Um, one other thing, please leave your cars unlocked for the next few weeks. I have some books that need to find homes. <laughs> it's almost as bad as zucchini, folk. You know, but. Now, if, if you want, there are a number of books there. Please look at them. They are for free. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've looked. I've been offered as much as 19 cents for some of my books. Woof. <laughs> I'm already planning what to do. Uh, so far, I'm about three inches offshore going fishing, but that's okay. Um, also, uh, the Pride Days for the, the upcoming uh, Pride Parade and Festival need some help. If you would... If you're interested in helping with them, the telephone number uh, is, is in the uh, book. The Rainbow Collective will be organizing that. So if you'd like to be supportive of them, please mark that down. Also, the we're going to meet on the 13th of June. Uh, we originally called this the Men's Gathering. It's been changed a bit to uh, the Men's Hosting a Cleaning Time. Because we looked how much needed to be done. And we will accept anybody and everybody uh, to come. We're going to work on finishing up the labyrinth, making sure that it is all cleaned and ready to go. Um, oh, a couple of other announcements we need to make. Um, Jan had I'm right here. And an announcement. And an announcement. <laughs> da, da, da. Um, hi. <laughs> The United Women in Faith, every year, or since COVID kind of interrupted it, but every year we like to recognize people in our church that really dis just display the hands and feet of Jesus. And this year we have two recipients, um, and I'm happy to announce, Julie David, can you come forward, please? And Dr. Terry Lundy. I want to say I am so grateful to be part of such a kind and welcoming community, family, church family, um, and the women's group. Uh, I'm just proud to be part of the, the work they do and, and grateful. So thank you. Congratulations, Julie. Um, I'm truly humbled. I come here just to have fellowship and to be involved in a organization that I respect and love. Um, I remember years ago, though, when I was really struggling emotionally, and I was lost. And I, it was time to get ready for the fall bazaar. And I said, can I help? I hadn't been at church for a little while at that point. And they said, bring it. Mm -hmm. And I was so welcomed, and I felt so good, and I felt so loved. And I've kept doing the work ever since. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone.
And my announcement is about the Fish Food Pantry. I know most of you know that we are one of the six sponsoring church for the Fish Food Pantry, and rumor has it it started here in our closet. But you know, the Unitarians and the Catholics say the same thing, so I'm not sure. <laughs> but we have had an incredible upsurge in clients recently. We had 267 families come through this week, and we're only open eight hours. <laughs> So we are out of tuna, we're out of oatmeal. I've never seen us out of those two, those two things in 12 years that I've been there. And we're low on mac and cheese and peanut butter and canned chicken and lots of proteins. If you can fill our wagon, it would really help because our next shipment from the Oregon Food Bank doesn't come in until the first Tuesday in June and our next food project pickup is for the second Saturday in June. So we've got a couple of weeks of really slim pickings. Thank you. Please bring, please bring what you can, and we can, we can share it. If you're not going to be here next Sunday, shame on you. <laughs> but if you're not going to be here next Sunday, please bring it in. We're open during the week. We'll, we'll get, every, get all the food together we can. And uh, I'm sure, Penny, that if push comes to shove, you will accept money? We do accept money, yes. Okay. <laughs> now, hurry, any other announcements we need to make? With uh, not hearing enemy, I invite you to stand, greet, celebrate those people who are joining you today in worship. As you, uh, as you come back together, I invite you to remain standing and we'll join together in the call to worship. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. <clears throat> we are Easter people. We are now called to be the people of Pentecost. We are called to boldly share the good news of God's love. Open your hearts, O people, to God's great power and love. We open our hearts to hear God's word for us and to joyfully proclaim Jesus Christ as our Savior. Our opening song is Spirit of God, Descend on My Heart.
please remain standing for the opening prayer. God of wind and fire, fire us up this day to receive your power. Lead us to proclaim the wondrous things that you have done and continue to do in our lives. Give us strength and courage to share the good news of your love and your presence. Challenge us to be transformed by your spirit, to be a blessing for all. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, this is the children's time, so if you are a child or a childlike adult, please come on up, because we do have some childlike adults here. I just know it. Now, oh, I'm stalling, like, because I'm going to sit on the step, and so if I'm still here during David's sermon, it's because I can't get up, so if someone would please come and help me, that would be very, very nice, but here I go. Okay. Whoa, I'm down. Okay, that was a hard one. So... Yeah. Oh, yeah, as a matter of fact, some of us, old, yeah, we can just roll, bump down the stairs and roll to our seats. We'll, we'll, <laughs> David said he'd pay a quarter to see that, but I don't know. Yeah, so we got, okay, we have a, we have a child coming, good, an actual child. She can probably get up and down much easier than we can, so we're just part of the show. Today is Pentecost, and so who knows what that means. Pentecost is the, I heard it, birthday of the church. It's the birthday of what we call the church, when the spirit descended and the church happened. So we're having a birthday party out in the Narthex, no, in the Narthex, in the fellowship hall after church. And you can't go and just sit where we want. You've got to find the table that's marked with the month of your birth. So you might be sitting with somebody you've never talked to before. Ooh, it could be, could be exciting, could be scary. So look for your birthday back there. We've got birthday cupcakes, both gluten-free and gluten-full, and we have other treats. But how many of you like birthday parties? Yay. Do you like birthday parties? Yes. What's the best part of a birthday party? Cake. Cake? <laughs> Present. Present. I always like the presents part, too. Okay, you may be surprised, but one of the things I loved at birthday parties was we'd always get little goodie bags at the end, and one in the goodie bag, oftentimes here, thank you, you would find noisemakers. And I love noisemakers. Any kind at all. There's lots of different types of noisemakers. <laughs> That's a favorite. That's a favorite. So noisemakers are great fun. And I figured we all, we need some noisemakers. So... Which one would you like? Which kind would you like? That pretty one? Here, pass that one down there. there. Oh, take whichever one you want. Sorry. I like this maker too. <laughs> what was it we used to say? Get what you get and don't pitch a fit. Okay, so what I want you to do to help David today, because it is a day of celebration, you know, if he makes a good point in his sermon, <laughs> and that would really help him, you know? So keep your. <laughs> so, so keep your, you know, like, he, like I said, it lets him know that he's doing a good job. So anytime you think, or sometimes it might mean, <laughs> step a little higher, Pastor. You know, so, <laughs> so I hope this will help David, and I hope it will help you begin the celebration of birthdays today, a uh, birthday of the church. So, Peppy Pentecost to you all. We should sing. While we try to get up, we'll sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. you David. <laughs> Today, we celebrate the birth of the community of faith we call the church. So often, we assume that the church came into being as a cohesive unit. Everyone agreed on major theological points, and everyone worked together. Not so. The early church, much as today's church, was filled with disagreements, schisms, deep and painful arguments, 
and regionalism, yet the church survived. When we are most fully the church, we are speaking the language of God's love and welcome. We live the amazing grace of forgiveness. We walk into a discipleship that empowers us and others. We will continue to have a number of voices regarding the theological ideas. Those discussions are vital to our ongoing growth and understanding of who God is and who we are in relation to God. However, our primary faith language must be the language of love. Hear now these words from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. God's word for the people of God. I invite, invite you, invite you to join me as we come together in this time to open in prayer. Join me in prayer. Gracious God, on this day when we celebrate your spirit coming anew to the church, let it come again to us. Let it come in great uproar, up, uplifting song, in joyous sounds, Come to us in the still, quiet moments. Come to us when we are weak and, and afraid. Come to us when we're bored. Come to us in the midst of uncertainty. And walk with us and lead us to be a community of faith. Reaching out, growing, becoming seeking, learning. 
We pray it in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. I love words. I mean, you may know that by now. But I love to pick up all kinds of words. And I was thinking about Paul as he was struggling with this thing called glossolalia, with speaking in tongues, either in tongues that nobody else understands, for there are two kinds of two kinds of speaking in tongues. There is that, that one that is called a special prayer language that is one's own language of prayer. And there is the one that, that happened at uh, Pentecost when people from all over the world heard the words of God's love in their own language. And Paul struggled with that. In fact, he told people in church, if there is to be speaking in tongues, there has to be someone to interpret it. There can't be just a speaking up in ways that nobody understands. If you're going to speak the word of God, Paul seems to be saying, do it plainly. Don't wrap it all up. Don't try to make it easier than it is or harder than it is. Just speak what you know. Speak what you've experienced. That the Spirit of God has come down and is in the process of making the body of Christ into what it's going to be. For you see, we haven't reached it yet. We're not there. We're reminded that we are growing and learning and becoming. That we are invited to grow in the Spirit of God. And I just, one of those things hit me this week when I was thinking about, okay, what kind of music can I do that just kind of blows the roof off the church and we're, we're jumping up and down and we're screaming and we're yelling and some of us may even be speaking in tongues and all of that stuff that happens. And I saw a meme that, that hit me that said, the Holy Spirit doesn't always come in shouts of acclamation, but in listening, in growing, in becoming in confessing and repenting. You see, we, we kind of think this Holy Spirit thing is something that comes down and zaps us, and if you come out of, a, of an evangelical tradition, you may have even heard the words baptism in the Holy Spirit, which often is this, this second baptism that is evinced by speaking in tongues. And we think that's what it's about. And we miss the power of the church, the power of God coming and renewing the people of God where the breath of God blows in. Remember, this word that we translate, uh, you know, as a spirit, the Hebrew word is ruach and the Greek word is pneuma, air. What in the, in the creation accounts where God scoops down and he picks up uh, the clay and he creates Adam. It was still just a piece of clay until God breathed into it. And it became a living being. And that reminder that we are the breath of God. And the wind blows. And it's a reminder that it brings freshness and renewal and courage to the people of God. We have to remember that this church, this, this body that we have, as incomplete as it is and as messed up as it is, started that way. It didn't suddenly start out where everybody agreed with everybody and they all sat down and just had this great big love fest. Not really. You hear the, the early church as they're arguing back and forth. You hear the questions about how are we supposed to take care of the widows and how are we supposed to take care of those who are really widows and those who aren't really widows. And that's a whole story you don't want to get into now. But the, the questions of that and how do we take care of the Greeks and how do we take care of our own and what part of the scripture are we to understand and how are we to bring it together? It was just what it is today, a hot mess. And if you look at the early church before Constantine, there were so many communities and it seems that they really enjoyed disagreeing with one another. 
Because you hear all kinds of little snips and shots back and forth. But that, that nascent community, moved by the Spirit of God, claimed that we are God's children. We are all God's community. And we're turn, trying to figure out how in heaven's name, and I mean that quite literally, how in the name of heaven are we supposed to live together? How are we supposed to grow together? The church has been struggling with that forever. There was a sense, there was a, a sense of, of some sort of unity when the Roman Catholic Church held, its, it held everything together. But even in that, folks, if you go to an Orthodox church, you're going to hear all about those schismatic Catholics, those people who, who were going back and forth. And it wasn't, you know, the Pope didn't show up suddenly and say, here I am. There were four bishops and they were fighting over who was the most important until finally the, the Pope of Rome won or lost. I'm not sure which is the right way to deal with that. But then they fought back and forth and within Roman Catholicism, if you didn't agree with what the Pope was doing, you formed your own order so that you could be off and be pure here. And Luther came and he just kind of took the lid off. And you get Lutherans and you get Presbyterians and you get this group and you get that group as a reminder that it is much more difficult as the people of God, as any people, to live together than it is to create your own community. It's a really old bad story. But I'm going to tell it anyhow. Person died, a drunk they died and went to heaven and St. Peter was showing them around, and over on this side, they were saying, a mighty fortress is our God, and everything, it was great and loud, and Peter said, that's the Lutherans, and a little bit farther in, now thank we all our God, and it was loud, and said, that's the Presbyterians, and then they went by a little another place, and they said, now, when you go by here, we need you to be quiet, and from the inside, you hear something that might have been oh for a thousand tongues to sing not really sure and when they got a little further saint saint peter said that's the methodists they think they're up here by themselves <laughs> that sounded more like a raspberry than a support <laughs> oh oy vey. You know, the bad thing is it's when your wife is the one who's, who's heckling you on this. Oh, thanks be to God. We're up here by ourselves. Okay, there we go. But, but that sense that the Spirit of God in this time is inviting us to hold on to that which is truly important, that we are children of God's love. And that that love is that most important thing. I, the, script, the sermon title comes from that 13th uh, chapter of, law, of uh, Corinthians. If I speak with the tongue of men and of angels but have not love, I am nothing. That reminder that, that our theology changes and evolves and grows as we come to understand new things. Part of the reason I'm having a hard time getting rid of my commentaries is quite frankly they're old white guy commentaries that, that speak to a time that was really relevant when I went to seminary, oh, those many, many, many years ago. But now people are understanding the Gospels in new ways that incorporates what was done before, but says, let's think about this in a new way. Let's think about this from a perspective that we haven't thought about before, which means my books are worth about 19 cents, which is about what they are worth. But that's okay. Because it reminds us that if the Spirit of God is blowing, it didn't just blow on Pentecost and then go away. It continues to blow and continues to create and continues to fan flames of love and grace and transformation and hope and joy and struggle. That Spirit that created a movement that fills all with the love and grace of God, that struggles through difficult times, the spirit that moves with us when as we're in worship service, an emergency vehicle goes by. <laughs> and in that movement becomes a call for prayer. The spirit of God is moving and alive. It is moving. 
as we figure out how to love together. And for us as United Methodists, that's even more real as part of our sister, as part of our community of faith is choosing to move away. And in that, there are people who find themselves in limbo. Their church is not their church anymore. And who's going to step in? It's, it's one of the great joys that across the nation, across the world, really, there are lighthouse churches that are popping up that are specifically for people who've been displaced by, those who, by churches that want to go to a different denomination. I have no problem with people leaving. We're, we're find ways to live. But I give thanks to God that the Spirit of God moves and says, here is an opportunity to show the love of God to people who are feeling lost and alone. We feel that spirit moving even in, in, as we're here. You know, this is a bit of, a, of a un, an unsure time for us as Roseburg United Methodist Church. We're in transition. And I know there have been the thoughts of what's this new person going to be like? How are we going to get along? Maybe some of you even said one of two things. Either, how are we going to get along without David? Or, oh, we are so glad. <laughs> That's what somebody said. There are two, every pastor makes a church happy one of two times. Either when that person comes or when they leave. There's something true to that. But it's an uncertain time. And the Spirit of God is moving to celebrate that, the, that Jeffrey who's coming in will bring gifts and graces to ministry and will lead this church in new ways. And we celebrate. We celebrate that the Spirit of God is at work and inviting us to reach out to, with, uh, to our siblings who are struggling because of who they, who they love and are finding their, their rights being curtailed. Or because they're BIPOC, or, 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 or. And the Spirit of God comes in flames of fire, in mighty rushing wind, in the calm quiet of being convicted of our sin, in the joy that comes in reconciliation and renewal, it comes in great noise, it comes in quiet, but it convicts and empowers us to be the people of God. Oh, thanks be to God, for God isn't done with us yet. There's a great future ahead. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to remain seated and let's join in the next song. I invite you to join me now in a time of prayer. If you're joining us online or coming in later on demand, uh, we encourage you to put your joys and concerns either in a, in, a, in a text to us or in the chat box so that we can keep those prayers going. I invite you to take a moment to center your place, your presence, to center yourself in this place as we let the Spirit of God move 
and breathe in our lives. Let's pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, kindle in us that fire of love for you. Send your Spirit into us, transform us, renew us, that we might be part of your kingdom of God, your creation, your renewal, that we might build bridges, that we might build communities, that we might open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to new possibilities, to an amazing cacophony of sounds that is praise, to a variety of experience that teaches all of the height and breadth and depth of your love for us, and that challenges us to live that height and breadth and depth out in our communities in our world. Dear God, dear God, we give you thanks for your love that never fails, for your presence in our lives. We give you thanks that you have given us this time, this place to be your servants. And we ask that you challenge us now to live out what we say in our words, what we feel in our hearts. Give us courage and hope and joy. And give us open ears and open eyes and open hearts that we might learn more about ourselves, that we might see where we've harmed another. And we might confess, repent, and be made new. We pray for our world. We pray for those we know who are hurting. And we offer these prayers to you, and I encourage you now to call out your prayers of hope and joy and longing and dreaming, your prayers for yourself, your friends, your world. Please call those prayers out now. These prayers we lift to you as we lift ourselves. We pray confident in your love, confident in the moving of your spirit, and humbly seeking that we might be made again and anew in your image. And we pray this in the name of your Son, our Lord, the one who teaches us to pray, and I invite you now to join in the singing of the Lord's Prayer.
come now to the time of giving our tithes and offerings to the work of the body of Christ for the glory of the kingdom of God. You may give to Roseburg United Methodist Church through one of a number of ways. You can put your offering in the offering box, which is behind the sound, uh, sound booth. Uh, there's a sign, that's, uh, a thing that's uh, some words on there, a word, <laughs> offering. You can guess what it's for. Anyway, but that box is there. You may drop your check, your money by the office. We're here Monday through Thursday, 9 to 1. If we're not here, you can drop it in the mailbox. You can also mail it to a 1771 West Harvard, uh, Roseburg 97471. You can go to our website, fumcroseburg.org, and click on the Give Now button. Or you can go to the Vanco app if you've got your smartphone. And again, follow the directions there to, to give. To reach out and touch lives. To support the work of Christ in making a difference to empower the Spirit of God to come. Thanks be to God. And I invite you now to, in thanks, give prayer, to give thanks to God as we listen to voice. you've done how could you fall so far you should be ashamed of yourself so I was ashamed of myself the lies I believed they got some roots that run deep I let them take a hold of my life I let them take control of my life in your presence, Lord, I can feel you digging all my roots up. I feel you healing all my wounds up. All I can say is hallelujah. 
time of prayer. Loving God, you have given us all sorts of good things. To you be praise and glory now and forever. Use these gifts that we have given, our time, our talents, and our treasures, to build up the body of Christ, to spread the good news of a God of love, a God of grace, to feed the hungry and clothe the naked and proclaim that this is God's year. We pray it in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Invites you to stand and join as we sing the last song today. Reminders: If you're on church council, we'll go back and get ready for the uh, for the charge conference. It'll be really short. If you're not part of that, um, you can head back, and uh, we have assigned seating for coffee hour. Please sit. You'll see the months there. Please sit there and and talk with the folk. And if you happen to be the only person at that table, you can probably bring your pick up your paper and go someplace else and invite. Um, and also. Um, as we have a picture of Jeffrey and Jennifer Hall, and they took one when they were up here at one of the one of the, the falls. So get begin to put face and and name together. There they are. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we there was some discussion of which falls that was, and you may have to ask them because all I know is it's a falls. <laughs> My brothers and sisters in Christ, part of the kingdom of God. Siblings together, go in the grace and peace and love of God our Creator, Christ our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit who is working in us and through us to build the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace.